So Crystal, what made you decide to come back to porn? Like what was the straw that broke the camel's back and, and got you to leave your position in the church and come back to the adult industry? Um, well, when I left the church, it was, I went through a bad divorce and, um, had a lot of seriously evil things happen to me. Um, and that's a whole other show in itself, but, yeah. um, basically, uh, had my house robbed and basically stolen custody of my son, one of my kids. Uh, it was a horrible, horrific thing I went through. Um, some serious government corruption, like somebody needs to make a movie about that stuff I went through. It's, it's crazy. But after going through all the divorce and everything that I went through, um, I kind of stepped back away from church because I went from going through a divorce and was going to church three, four times a week for a while. And then people in the church, because I'm the porn star and my ex was um, a pastor or it, he got actually got voted out and they wanted me to pastor the church by myself. And I said, no, but, um, they started saying, Oh, she, you know, she's a whore. She must've cheated on him. That's why they went through a divorce and everything. Well, come to find out after, um, going through everything and, uh, for them knowing all the truth. And he ended up walking into the church with the girl he was cheating on me with, on <laughs> with, and, um, the truth came out that I was being a good wife and he was not being so good. <laughs> wow. And, um, so I end up, um, I end up getting remarried, um, for, to a guy that I went to high school with. And, um, one of my friends started only fans and she was telling me about it. And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, like I'm, I'm a sexual person. I love being sexual. I love, you know, being, um, having that power over my body and everything. And so that's why I got into it. Yeah. I mean, and, and now you can come in on your own terms, right? You don't have to, you know, like the old Nadia Hilton who first came in, who had to work with people that she didn't want to, had to do things that she didn't want to do. I mean, that's completely changed. So I can imagine that your experience is drastically different. It's yeah, it's, it's definitely completely different. I, you know, like, Porn back then, when I was shooting with somebody that I didn't want to shoot with, it was 100% acting. There was no having an orgasm or anything like that. And now it's like, it's real. It's me. It's not the craziness of the fake world of acting when it comes to porn. It's like 100% real. And I love it. And I'm having fun doing it. Mm -hmm. How else is OnlyFans different from you? for you versus like when you were performing, is it like the fan? I mean, I'm sure is it, I won't say it's, is ask if it's the money because you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a part of it. We're all here to, uh, you know, pay our bills. Right. But yeah. Do you, is it like the fan interaction? I mean, you just said that, you know, the control of your own content is good, but is there anything else about only fans that really has made it a different experience for you? I love the one-on-one -on -one interaction that I have with people. You know, I answer all of my messages myself um, and just talking with people. And if somebody wants like a specific video or a specific picture, it's like I get to fulfill that, you know, fantasy for them. Where mm -hmm. before it's like, you know, they have to go to a porn store and or, you know, pull a DVD off the shelf or Google me on Pornhub to watch a video. And now it's like, OK, watch the video and I can talk to her and tell her what I like or what I didn't like. So I love that aspect of it. Do you get people who come to you who also like grew up in the church or were a part of the church and had a lot of guilt around their sexuality? Um, do people ever relate to you on that, that aspect? Yeah, I get a lot of, I get a lot of that. I get a lot of, um, women that are, you know, uh, bisexual or, or fully gay and talking about how, you know, they felt so much shame and they've, they've became really depressed and, and, you know, like I talk to them and just tell them, you know, how much they're loved and not let the views of people put them down because that's not God. People are not God. They're just people. Mm -hmm. So how you, I mean, you kind of mentioned briefly that, um, you know, you have a different, you're still, um, you know, you still somebody who believe, believes in God. Um, can you tell us like how your relationship with religion and maybe with God has, has changed now? Like, 
something like a little bit more specific? Like, do you still go to church? Um, are you specific about where you go? Is there like things that you take and, and leave when you go? You know how like sometimes when you listen to somebody preach, are there some things that you're just like, no, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that with me. Um, but I'm going to take these pieces. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I go to a church now. Um, I don't go like I used to go, like I said, three, four times a week. And now I probably go once a month. And sometimes I I'll go a couple months without even going because mm-hmm. I don't want somebody's view and somebody's, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> somebody's view of the Bible to be my view. You know, mm-hmm. everybody interprets things differently. And in the same way, I don't want somebody to control my mind that way. I will read stuff or listen to stuff and take on what I want to take on now instead of it being this judgmental thing. Because if I go to go to one church and I'm listening to the same type of sermons all the time, if somebody it is, if it's somebody that's against gays, it's going to be drilled in my head over and over and over again. It's like, I don't want to listen to that because I'm not against gays. I'm, you know, bisexual myself. So Mm -hmm. um, I go to a church that is more based around love and just loving people and accepting people for who they are. And um, it's just, it's different for me now. It's like, I feel more love now than I did before. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you see? So I'm sorry. I'm just always interested in, in this and religion. Cause I was raised an atheist. Um, <laughs> so like, I don't understand what it's like to like be like, I've never been to church. <laughs> um, but I kind of, I do have like a spiritual, you know, when I got sober, um, and I started going into the program, you know, there is a lot of talk about God, which at first freaked me out. Cause I was like, no, 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 I'm not talking about God. Like this is like, crazy Jesus shit. Um, but then as time went along, I found that, you know, you can kind of, everybody can make, can decide like what God means to them and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like kind of tailor it to what helps them, I don't know, have like faith in the future and, you know, have gain a perspective that helps them like process life better. So for you, like what, What is God to you, like, specifically? Um, God to me is love. That's, like, all I can explain is, like, love. Because I see, like, I look at my my kids and I look at my daughter, looking at her eyes, it's like, you know, that is a gift from God to me. That's that's what I feel it is. Um, I believe karma is part of God, you know? It's like, you get what you put out. I mean, um... If something, if you, if you are bad and evil towards people, I believe that comes back on you. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a part of God. Um, but my relationship with God has never changed. It's that it's like, I still feel that love. I've never felt that like judgment uh, or the, whatever you want to call the convictions and, and feel like I'm going to hell for things. It's like, I believe everybody makes mistakes. You know, I'm not perfect. I've never claimed to be perfect. Um, but I, one of the things I will say about, about church and stuff is when you're raised up in church and I wasn't raised up in church, but what they teach you is that you need to be like God. You need to be like Jesus. You got to Got to be like that. And when everybody's trying to be that perfect, you're going to fail because you're never mm-hmm. going to be like God. If you know, God is the creator of everything. You're not going to be like that because that's perfection. So you're going to fail every time. And that's where the depression rolls in. And I feel like if you're in church and you're believing everything that you're hearing, you're going to be continuously depressed all the time. And if you, you know, step outside the box and start looking into everything, you know, go and research other religions and see what everybody else is believing and then form your own relationship with God, whether it's, you know, you don't have to call him Jesus. You don't have to call him whatever, just form your own relationship and, make that what it is, make it what you want it to be, not what somebody else is forcing you to believe. Right. Do you believe in, in God in the way that they speak of him in the Bible, that like he's an actual entity and do you believe in that in Jesus and that Jesus was his son and, and died for the sins of man? I don't believe a lot of stuff in the Bible. There's so many contradicting things in there 
that yeah. doesn't make any sense. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, like all, they'll, they'll go back and start fighting on scriptures and stuff like that. And it's, it's like, yes, it is contradicting. There's a lot of unknown things. There's that it's hard to believe. And look how many times the Bible has been rewritten. You know, it's, mm-hmm. you go back during, you know, the whole King James, it's, it's like, you have a king that took the Bible from the scrolls and made it into something he wanted it to be and then formed all these books and sent them out to everybody and was like, okay, you got to believe exactly what it is when nobody else could read. Yeah. So it's like, what, re- what is the true story here? Because I'm not going to send somebody to hell for not for wearing, having a woman wear pants. Like that's ridiculous, but that's mm-hmm. what the Bible will teach you. So I don't, I don't believe it all. Yeah. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I do. And then what do you believe constitutes somebody going to hell versus going to heaven? Um, I think going to heaven is a matter of your heart. You know, we all have done evil things. We all do good and bad and we all make mistakes. I think if you are a true evil person at heart, then you're going to hell. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think that God's going to punish us for making mistakes and I think that, you know, it's, you got, you have to be a good person and you'll, you'll know if you're a good person, you'll know by your heart. Yeah. I just, sorry, this is, this is something that I've always like thought about. Um, just because again, like I wasn't raised in religion and I'm, I've always been interested in like kind of the science behind the way our brain works. And if like, do you believe that some people were born evil and if they were born evil, like didn't God make them evil? How, like, you know what I mean? Like, so then yeah. like, is that fair if God makes you evil and then you're evil and then you go to hell because you're a certain way that God makes you? I mean, when they, when they talk about like sociopaths and stuff like that, like there's been studies of people's brains that like, you know, certain parts of their brain like doesn't really function properly. So like they literally cannot experience empathy. Like yeah. how does that work in like a heaven and hell world? That and you know it's funny. So in college, I did a paper. It was a twenty-five page paper that was born or made. It was called, and I was researching, you know, um, serial killers and you know their lives. Like uh, I think it was who was a Jeffrey Dahmer, where they they, mm-hmm. um, you know, went through his brain and everything. It was like I believe that there's a little of each. You know, born or made. It's like their experiences is their brain or their experiences are things that happen during their life, whether they were beaten or, you know, somebody forced their children to have sex right in front of them or, you know, all the messed up things that can happen. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's, there are things where, you know, you're just born messed up. So I, I don't know. I I can't really say that I can answer that because I just don't know, but I, I believe that there's a little bit of each thing that happens to them when it comes to, yeah. Being evil. I think it's, yeah, it's usually, experience. yeah, it's usually a combination of some kind of like chemical imbalance mm-hmm. plus like horrible childhood. Yeah. I just, I mean, I don't, I don't have an answer either. It's just something I've always like thought about, like, you know, how does, how does that work? Like how much of us, like, I guess how much of our life is, is free will or, or how much of us is just like pre-wired and then like we are the way that we are. Cause one of the things that you know, I've really tried to evolve as a person in is like compassion and thinking about how people react to things and how people, everybody's kind of doing their best with the tools that they're given. And some people just don't have like the tools to process like life properly. Right. So like the way some people may react to you a certain way, which is completely unfair and unkind, but like you know, they're literally stuck in this kind of brain pattern where they don't know like how to be any different. So, you know, since we can't change the way that people behave, like the only thing that is really in our power is how we react to things. So I just always kind of think about, you know, if this is a horrible person, they probably just don't have the tools, the knowledge, they didn't have the love and the support that like would be able to bring them to a place where they could change their behavior. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things, um, I learned was, was sin is only when you act on it. You know, Mm -hmm. you can think about it, you know, like think about, you know, murdering somebody, but it only becomes a sin when you act on it. But then people will be like, Oh, you know, well, you know, the second thought is what 
if you think about it twice, then you, you know, you're going to hell. So it's like, you know, it's, it's hard to learn any part of religion and then, you know, have these thoughts and, you know, wanting to be a normal person, but then you have all these evil sides to you mm -hmm. and you get confused. Cause you're like, do I act on this? Is this a bad thing? Is this a good thing? Am I going to hell? And you know, it's, it's definitely a world that I still think about every day. Like I think about these things a lot. I can't say every day, but I do think about them a lot because it's, it's an unknown world. You know, nobody has died and been dead for a week and come back and be like, Hey, this is what hell's like, or this is what heaven's <laughs> like. It's like, no, you guys don't, you don't really know. You got to kind of learn your own ways and learn your own patterns and just try to be a good person. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing too. It's like another thing about religion that, that freaks me out is the whole like idea that, you know, you're going to go to hell and burn in hell for all eternity if you don't like act this very specific way or dress this very specific way. I mean, what a manipulative tool to yep. use to frighten people into submission. It's just like, it's so terrifying. I mean, and, and then it's like, so you live your whole life basically behaving in a certain way because like you fear like this horrible afterlife. I just, I don't know. I can't imagine like being indoctrined in that way as a child to like, you know, live your life in like fear of, of hell. It's just like such a crazy idea to me. Right. It is insane to me too. It's like, it's nuts. No, if God loves you, why would he send you to hell to burn for the rest of your life? If God will love you. And yeah. then the, what, what the, some, some churches will teach you is like, Oh, if you don't go to church, if you don't go to church on Sunday, then you're going to be going to hell. It's like, I don't think so. I don't yeah. believe that God loves us. And then they're going to send us hell for not going and sitting into a, in a building for two hours every Sunday. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. And then, mm -hmm. and then what makes people think that their specific like religion niche of religion is the right one. What about all the other people who believe in God, but in a different way? Like, so they're all going to hell and like only you guys are going to be saved. Like, I don't know. That feels really narcissistic to me. Yeah. And that's, that's why I always tell people, I'm like, you know, go and research other religions because whether it's, you know, Christianity or Buddhism or, you know, Baptist or all, everything that's out there, Pentecostal, all the stuff, go and research all the different religions. Cause the more you learn, the more of an open mind you're going to have with things because mm -hmm. I don't believe not one single religion is right. I think that everybody's got little pieces of them, but yeah, but, you know, there's good and bad with everything. I mean, I feel like ultimately, you know, we all need something to believe in that's like bigger than us because sometimes otherwise life just feels really like small and impossible and just this kind of, or, or even like big and impossible, you know, like you're just floating at sea rudderless and, and you just like, there's no point to anything. So I understand like that needing to feel like there's some kind of like divine order or divine power, or I don't know, someone, something or someone out there that's just like looking for you. Cause otherwise the world just feels like chaotic and insane. And and also too, you know, I can understand the roots of religion because before we had science to explain all of these natural phenomena, like I was watching a nature show last night and they showed the Northern lights. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think it was up in Iceland and it's like, how could you explain that if you didn't understand science now, you know, like we right. know what causes the Northern lights, like this, these atmospheric, um, situations. But like, you know, before that, like you see these crazy flashes, like, how could you not think that was God? Yeah. You know, like it, it just. Have you read the Bible before? Like, uh, that'd be a no. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever book you? So you, have you ever read any part of it? Like the book of revelations? I have read. Yeah. So I was an English major. So, um, I have read the Bible in terms of like when it came, it was referenced in, in literature or something like that. But overall, like I've never like sat down and read the Bible. No. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing that the, like, like I said, there's parts of the Bible I believe and some of it that I don't believe, but one of the big chapters I believe is, um, the book of revelations. Like there's a million different ways to interpret things, but, um, part of it talks about the chip in the hand when, you know, the antichrist is coming and stuff. And like, I think about, okay, how did back then they even know anything about there being an electronic chip in your hand, especially this is before electricity or anything else. And there, it literally predicts the future. There's wait, a lot wait, of parts wait. of it. 
wait, hold on, hold on. In the Bible, <laughs> yeah. they talk about that there's an electronic chip in your hand. Yeah, they talk about it even being in, in your hand or in your forehead, um, a chip, and it's called the mark of the beast. And, it's, and they're doing and this overseas. And, wait, and they called it electronic? Like before they, electronic? They didn't say they didn't electronic. Existed? They said the mark of the beast, and they said it's a chip. Wow. That's crazy. It's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, if you ever, you know, if you're ever going to read anything, read the book of the Revelations, because that's, that's. Isn't that like the, like the most, like, violent and depressing and frightening part of the Bible? No, I, oh my God, there's so many horrific things. I mean, there's rape, there's everything that happens in way, way before all that stuff. Jeez. But there's a lot in there where it's like, you know, children shouldn't even be reading this stuff. It's pretty bad. 